there, Lacey here with The Sweet Pea Chef, and today I wanna to show you one of my favorite kitchen tools, which is a spiralizer. This thing is so helpful because it lets me turn healthy veggies and some fruits into noodles, which is a great way to add to pasta, replace for a less healthier option, and also to add to soups, to add to salads. So I'm gonna show you a ton of different veggies and some fruits that you can spiralize and what you can use them in. So let's get started. So my spiralizer costs about 25 bucks. I got it on Amazon. I'll include the link for it below in the description. It's so easy, it cleans easy, it, you can put it in the dishwasher, and I've had it forever. I use it on all sorts of stuff. So if you want this one, you can have it, or if you don't have a spiralizer, you can also use a vegetable peeler, either a Y vegetable peeler or just a regular one. With a vegetable peeler, you won't have exactly the same kind of noodle, but it works in a pinch. We're gonna start with zucchini, which is by far what I spiralize the most. Zucchinis are great for spiralizing into noodles so that you can replace them as like you would a spaghetti noodle. I use it with spaghetti sauce, with just some garlic and sea salt and some olive oil, it's just great. So to get our zucchini ready, what we need to do is basically wash them off and slice both ends so they're flat. The flatter the better so it fits against our spiralizer best. Also, you wanna make sure that with our zucchini, because some can be kind of thin, you wanna make sure you get as long and as wide as you can, because that's gonna make it as easy as possible to get our noodles from our spiralizer. You can also do this exact same technique with some yellow squash. I like to mix them up too. Just wash it, cut off the sides very evenly, and then spiralize it, and again, the wider the better, so that's gonna make it as easy as possible so it doesn't kinda of run off on the spiralizer that keeps it nice and even. Now we're gonna do sweet potatoes, which are awesome as sweet potato noodles. So we're gonna wash them, and then we're gonna slice both ends so they're nice and flat. Now, with sweet potatoes, you can choose to remove the skin if you want. I don't. Not only does it add a little bit more texture, but it also has the extra fiber and extra nutrients but you can remove the peel if you want, it's no big deal. For our spiralized sweet potato noodles, we're just gonna put it onto our spiralizer and start twisting away. If you have any sweet potatoes that are kind of wonky and have really odd shapes, those might make it a little bit tricky to spiralize, so the more even and long, the better. So just keep that in mind when you're picking out some sweet potatoes to spiralize. All right, next we're gonna do cabbage. You can do red cabbage or green cabbage. What you wanna do to prepare it is to remove the outer leaves of the cabbage and then to slice the root end to make it flat. Then just add that root end to the spiky part of our spiralizer and the other part facing the blades and just spiralize away. What this is gonna do, it's gonna turn it into shredded cabbage, which makes such quick work of shredded cabbage that you can use in coleslaw or you can add it on top of some tacos or whatever you want. It's so much easier. Next, we're gonna be doing some bell peppers. You can use any color you like. Just make sure that on the stem side that you cut the stem as close to the uh, top of the bell pepper as possible so it's flat. Then you're gonna put that piece against the pokey part of the, the prongs of the spiralizer and the other part is gonna face the blades. And then you're gonna spiralize it slowly. So with bell peppers, you're also gonna have a little bit of the insides come out into the spiralized bell peppers along with some seeds. So you can just pull those out, it's pretty easy. Um, or you can rinse everything off when you're done. So spiralized bell peppers are great for sauteing for just by themselves or to add into fajitas, or you can even saute them and add them into omelets, whatever you want. All right, next we're gonna do some spiralized broccoli stems. So broccoli stems do not get enough love if you ask me, and they're so tasty. So what I do is I just peel off all of the ends of all of the leaves and everything on the broccoli stem, and I slice both ends evenly. And then what we do is just attach it to your spiralizer and slowly spiralize it. And then you can just saute this spiralized broccoli stem or add it to some salad. It's really tasty and definitely a great way to not waste any extra produce. Now we're gonna spiralize some carrots. And just like with broccoli, the longer and the wider the better. That way the spiralizer has a lot to work with when you're twisting it. So with our spiralized carrots, you can either peel it if you want, or if you just give it a good wash, you don't have to worry about it. And then we're gonna spiralize it into little delicious looking spiralized carrots. So with these, I like to add them to salads for a little bit of extra crunch, or they're great to just give to the kids. They love having a little new way to enjoy some carrots. 
All right, next we're gonna be doing some spiralized cucumbers, which are great, but they're not as firm as the other vegetables that we've been doing. So you wanna make sure to go as slow as possible and also pick as firm of a cucumber as you can. You will notice a little bit more liquid comes on the counter when you're doing this, but it'll still make spiralized cucumber that's perfect that's to use anyway. So just FYI on the cucumber. All right, next we're gonna do some spiralized red onions, which are really great to saute or add raw to a salad or on top of a burger. In order to prepare our red onion to be spiralized, all you have to do is slice both ends off and then remove the outer peel. Then attach it to the spiralizer and go. Because of the size and the shape of a red onion, it's just gonna make quick work using the spiralizer as opposed to slicing it. Next, we're gonna do some jicama, which is quite possibly my favorite thing on earth. In order to prepare it, we need to slice both ends off of our jicama and then remove the peel because it is not edible. So I use a Y peeler just to remove all of the outer layer and then I attach it to the spiralizer and make spiralized jicama noodles, which is so awesome to add to a salad, to just enjoy on its own, to top anything off as a little extra garnish. It's just awesome. All right, so now we're gonna make some spiralized butternut squash noodles, which is like just so fun. So what you do in order to do this is you basically need to chop off both ends of our butternut squash and then peel it, just like we did with the jicama. Use a Y peeler to remove all of the peel. Anytime there's peel that's not edible, that's what you have to do because the spiralizer doesn't care. It's just gonna spiralize it into noodles. So remove all of the skin and then attach our butternut squash to our spiralizer and then spiralize. We're also gonna wanna make sure, if you can, to find the most evenly long shape of a butternut squash. The longer and the narrower the better so that it actually can have even noodles. But anyone will work, you just have to move it around a little bit if you have to. Okay, so now we're gonna do spiralized beets, which make the most amazing looking noodles ever. To get our beets prepared, all you have to do is chop off both ends so it's flat and then remove the peel using a vegetable peeler. And make sure we're using raw beets for this. That's gonna make it nice and firm so that when we spiralize, it doesn't just fall apart. So once you have it all prepared, attach it to our spiralizer and spiralize into delicious beet noodles. So we've done a lot of veggies and starches here and squashes, but you can also do spiralized fruits. I like to do apples and pears as long as they're firm so that they, have, they can hold up and they don't get all mushy when you turn them into noodles. So in order to prepare apples, I like doing Granny Smith apples because they tend to be very firm or a Honeycrisp apple. You don't need to remove any of the skin. All you have to do is slice very evenly on the top part of the stem piece so that it's, it's as flat as possible to spiralize. Then try to line up the core with the part of the spiralizer that it attaches to so that none of the seeds come through when you spiralize. You can do this exact same thing with a pear. You just cut off the top of the pear, then attach it to the spiralizer and spiralize. These are really cool ways to enjoy fruits and they're also great for kids or adults <laughs> to enjoy a new way to have fruit. Um, or you could even saute them up with a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil and uh, have a nice tasty sweet snack. One of the biggest issues I had when I got a spiralizer was knowing what blade to use for any of my different types of spiralizing. Pretty much I stick to the same one blade for all of them, which is the noodle maker blade and it just works for everything, but you can play around with them, that's the beauty of it. So if you have any issues getting any of the little bits out of the nooks and crannies um, from your spiralizer, I found that I use a kitchen toothbrush that I keep in the kitchen that I use to clean out little pieces and nooks and crannies in my dishes and it works perfectly to clear up anything in the blades that you can't quite get and you don't want to cut yourself. All right, so now I hope you have all sorts of inspiration to go out there and spiralize all sorts of fruits and vegetables to incorporate them into your lifestyle. It's a great replacement for pasta and just a new fun way to enjoy healthy foods. So make sure to subscribe so you never miss new ways to enjoy more healthy foods and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.